Welcome to another edition of Around Amesbury. I'm Meryl Goldsmith and we're going to spend the next half hour talking about the Amesbury Carriage Museum. And with me today is Mary Chatney, who's the president of the Amesbury Carriage Museum, and Susan Costco. She is a member of the board of directors and really a carriage authority as well as a driver. You judge competitions, you are a writer, and you've published articles about carriages. So um, we want to talk about the Carriage Museum just um, in general, but the other really interesting thing is just recently a bunch of carriages got moved and I hear it was quite a sight, so we want to talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit too. So uh, Mary, you might look familiar to a lot of people <laughs> in Amesbury. You're a former municipal counselor mm -hmm. here in Amesbury and um, just recently left your job uh, as an HR director at Northern Essex Community That's College. Yeah. So you retired, but you're working again. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, um, Susan, you write articles for carriage museums? Well, for carriage uh, uh, ca magazines. Carriage magazines. Right. Uh, the carriage Journal, uh, Driving Digest, the American Driving Society magazines. I've been published in all of those. So I do understand mm -hmm. that you, um, when you do drive the carriages, you actually are dressed, you know, in a period, in, in period clothing? It's not so much period, but there are requirements. You have to wear a hat, gloves, an apron, and carry a whip. And the whip, contrary to most people's understanding, is not used to hurt the horse, but is used uh, to help it turn in certain directions and uh, really to be give some of the support that uh, you don't have because you're not on its back. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, I, I just think that sounds really fascinating. So um, the museum. Uh, has really go undergone like changes mm -hmm. and continues to evolve and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that Mary. Okay well um, I think it was at the fundraising uh, event that we did back in June where we were talking uh, presenting the information about how we want to renovate the building that I spoke about it, the organization having been an idea since the 1940s and actually became um, an organization of the Amesbury Carriage Museum in 1985. So we're celebrating 30 years of trying to bring this idea to actual realization. We have carriages, but we really don't have a permanent home. And this year we were fortunate enough, Dan Healy, who's a great supporter of everything Amesbury, um, generously gave us space at um, Oakland Street, uh, part of the Chestnut Innovation Center, at a very reduced rate. So we were able to move some of the carriages so that we can now actually bring people in. We won't be able to be open every day, but on occasion we can bring people in to now see some of our collection. And uh, it's a way for us to be more out in the community, which is part of the feasibility study that we did, so that people will know who we are and we can become more of an active member of the community and increase our membership, so hopefully then raise the funds to have a permanent home at the Heritage Center down in Heritage Park. Because that would be kind of hard. I mean, I'm just thinking about it. If you didn't really have a place, you mm -hmm. know, it seems like it's this vicious cycle of, it seems like a vicious cycle. Very it, much it, so. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. much so. And I think that we're very fortunate that we have all these community partners, the Chamber of Commerce and other community members, businesses, working with us because it's the history of Amesbury. It's not just going to be the new Her Heritage Center uh, building will not just be carriages, it will be the history of industry in Amesbury. So we'll be able to bring in the electric vehicles, which we're, we know, you know, here we are, you know, 100 years later, and, and we have Tesla making all these terrific vehicles, but yet, you know, in the early 1900s, the Bailey Corporation was right. doing it in Amesbury. They were the Tesla. They were the Tesla <laughs> of their time. And so bringing that in, then all other industry, you know, in. We're historic and we want that to be cel a celebration of who we are as a community and, and what we've been able to bring to the world. So where will it eventually end up again? It will be in the Lower Mill Yard. It's the building that's currently there and the park has been built around it. It's beautiful and that is the old Biddle and Smart carriage building so it's, it's historic in its own nature and uh, it's really appropriate for the carriage museum to be located in a carriage mill. So you <laughs> yes, know, that's that works part out. of the whole part of it. it's great. Is there any kind of like time frame that you guys are talking it's about? It's basically raising the funds. We mm -hmm. have to raise um, about six million dollars to uh, renovate and the building is owned through an, an alliance between the Chamber of Commerce and the Carriage Museum so in partnership with them we'll be doing the fundraising and reaching out I think across 
outside of Amesbury and across the, the country, I think, for people to help us fund fund the renovation and to make it a reality. Well, I had no idea, and to bring you know Susan into the conversation that you're you know writing articles for Carriage magazines. Um, I mean, I'm not part of that, so I didn't even know that. But obviously, this must be way bigger than just the carriages in Amesbury. Oh well. There are carriage museums in a number of places around the country, and there are people who do nothing but collect carriages. They don't drive them, they don't have horses, but they just like to collect the vehicles because they're old and because they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, if people want to be in touch with um, the Amesbury Carriage Museum, mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking uh, on your website, which is amesburycarriagemuseum.com. That's correct. Um, your email address is amesburycarriagemuseum at gmail.com. That's com. correct. Yep. So, uh, and you have Facebook too. Yes, we do. So that's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So people can, uh, you had said to me earlier that probably the best way to be in touch is through email or electronically that's through Facebook correct. or whatever. So That's correct. So if somebody wanted to come look at the carriages, is that like a possibility? <laughs> It is a possibility. Actually, this past Monday, a group of us, uh, Peter Hoyt and uh, Tom Pendergast, who are also members of the board, and Susan and I uh, were cleaning the carriages that we had moved so that we can get them ready to be presented. And we're meeting again on Monday to finish that job, hopefully, of those three <laughs> that we actually moved. So it will be by appointment only, and I was told that you know during specific events I can get um, special permission, special permits to be able to be open because the space we're in does not have two forms of egress, so I can't be open as a museum. Oh, okay. It's, but it's a great clean storage facility that we know that we can now actually bring people to and feel that they're safe in that environment because the current the building that we want to renovate doesn't have any electricity or anything like that. It's not a safe place to really be walking people in and out of um, that want to come and view. So how many carriages are owned totally? Do you have an I estimate? Did, I or? think it's about 36 yeah. and we're I think we're going to be collecting another four. North Andover Historical Society contacted us last spring, and Susan and I went and viewed the carriages they had, and we're going to take ownership of four of those, and we still have to arrange when that move's going to happen. There's so much going on, it's, it's hard to get everything done. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so, like, when somebody like the, this North, An or North Andover organization contacts you, what do you look in for something that would be you know, something that you just don't have, or the shape that it's in, or what? What are you looking for when you're, you know, looking at the carriages? Oh, let's see. I, I'm looking for carriages. Number one, that we don't already have, and that are unique and are American vehicles, and because Amesbury made so many vehicles that were sold under different names, under different manufacturers' names, it's really hard for us to tell what was made where. But we know that. Um, for example, there's a Rockaway, a kind of a vehicle called a Rockaway that's at uh, North Andover. We don't have a Rockaway. So this would be a good vehicle. And it's, they're all in pretty tough shape, but that's one of the things we'll be doing is trying to get restoration mm -hmm. um, and get them stabilized so they don't deteriorate further. Mm -hmm. Are there people around that you've run into that actually like drive the carriages? I drive one. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my okay. carriage is my carriage is about 110 years old. Wow. It's a type of carriage called a runabout. We have one of those mm -hmm. in the museum. And uh, where yeah. do you drive it? Well, I compete at various shows. I've done Walnut Hill. I've done um, Harvey Waller's show out in uh, Western Massachusetts. Uh, I do a lot of the Morgan shows because my horse is a Morgan. Uh, but mostly, I judge and. Uh, organize and things like that. So when you're driving the carriage, are you the only person in the carriage? With this, usually when I usually, drive, yes. Yeah, okay. When this, but there, it is built so that it holds two people. Mm -hmm. But I think the people 110 years ago were smaller because that is <laughs> getting two people in that carriage is a, is a bit of a squeeze. So is Juice like have it in a garage or something or a it's, barn? <laughs> I'm so fascinated it's, uh, by this. It's starred in a carriage barn okay. with uh, about eight or nine other carriages. Um, and it has a wooden floor, which is where a carriage should be stored, not on concrete. And uh, it's. You know, it, it has to breathe. It has to be so that it's not in a heated place. It has to breathe with the 
you know, you don't like it to get too hot and humid, but uh, to having it get cold is fine. So does anybody know, like, how many carriages were produced in Amesbury? Is that just, like, not even something? I mean, is it all across the world? Is it... Tens of thousands. Tens of yeah. thousands. Tens of thousands were produced mm -hmm. in Amesbury. And as I said, it's hard to track them because what they did in some circumstances, they would sell them in what's called in the white. And so they would make the carriage and then just put a white base coat on it. Then they would send it to Boston or to the south or to Siberia, to various places, and they would do the final coat, the final finish on it. Maybe finish it the way they wanted or put That's their branding right. on it or that, whatever. And that, yes, and on the back of them they have these little brass uh, name plates so that you know who the manufacturer was. Unfortunately, there are people who collect those little mm -hmm. plates and they oh. pry them <laughs> off the vehicle so it's getting mm -hmm. harder to find them. How many, do you, do you know how many um, companies were actually in Amesbury, like at the height of it? What, you know, how many people were actually making uh, carriages and, you know, it must have employed hundreds and hundreds it of people. It did, it did. Yeah. And people went in and out of business. They merged, they, sons to, went off on their own. It's, it's, it's not a straight line. It's, it's lines like this mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, but yes, a lot of people were employed and I think at one point it was the major employer in, in Amesbury, probably at the 1890s in that area that time. And then they were sent everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they Siberia, mm -hmm. like well, ev yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were sent just everywhere. A lot of them were sent down south because they don't have the wood to make uh, carriages that you need like hickory and oak. They don't have the kind of wood that you need to make good carriages in the south. And is that why, you know, pretty much it ended up in Amesbury because the natural resources were Absolutely. here to, mm -hmm. you know, to support mm -hmm. that? And the human resources because mm -hmm. there were people here that had the skills. Some came from Europe. Um, various you know, woodworking skills, and this is a perfect location for it. And plus there was transportation, there was the water transportation and then the train. Right, absolutely. And I don't know if you real know that um, th the ghost trail mm -hmm. that we have is yeah. because of the carriages being put on the flatbeds of the, of the railroad and then they would cover them in white sheets, and then and they would be, that was the ghost train. Really? I yeah. had no idea. Isn't That's, that cool? That is really yeah. cool. <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to take a short break. So um, what we're going to come back and talk about is the process of moving these carriages. Uh, some were up on a second floor, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I understand, Susan, that, that you really orchestrated, mm -hmm. like, this, this whole thing. And I can't even imagine, you know, not just, like, because of their age, you know, you've got that whole factor and just the whole thing. So, <laughs> so, so, anyway, we're going to take a quick break okay. and we're going to talk about that next. So okay. I hope everybody will stay tuned and we'll uh, get back to the discussion about the Amesbury Carriage Museum with Mary Chatney and Susan Coso. So we'll be back in a minute. friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart does a sea race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Welcome back. I'm Meryl Goldsmith on Around Amesbury, and we have Mary Chatney, who's the president of the Amesbury Carriage Museum, and Susan Coso, member of the board of directors. You're a carriage authority, a driver. You judge competitions. You do articles about it. You know your carriages. Mm -hmm. So um, I do have a question before we talk about um, the move. So, you know, as I was listening to you speak, you said there's around 40 carriages. Mm -hmm. So where are they? 
I mean, are they everywhere? <laughs> they pretty much yeah, are okay. everywhere. Because how many are, are in the current facility? There's just three, you said, right? Just three. Okay, so. And there's, uh, we have one at Town Hall. You see that beautiful yep, one. There's one at the uh, health center, the hospital. Um, and there's a group of them in a, a woman's barn. And then there's still quite a few down at the at the uh, Biddle and Smart building on Water Street. So you keep tabs on them and people have agreed to, you know, store them and whatever right. until mm -hmm. all of this is, is That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. All right, because I'm like, wow, that is a lot of carriages. It is. I know, it which is, is exciting. Definitely. It, is. Yeah, it really is. It's <laughs> wonderful to have so much variety too because mm -hmm. we have a lot of different everything from a chaise which would date back to close to 1800 to really some more modern vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that it's uh, you know, it's a good variety. So let's talk about the move, okay? <laughs> because um, I just uh, I just think it's so interesting because you have, uh, you know, this very antique, beautiful carriage that could be on the second floor and needs to be moved. Mm -hmm. And how does that happen? Oh, carefully, <laughs> carefully, very <laughs> carefully. The effort. Yeah. Um, we were very fortunate. Uh, we were able to get the use of a forklift truck, mm -hmm. and they had built like a platform on it, and so they raised it up to the second floor of the Biddle and Smart building. They opened up a window, and we were able to roll them out onto roll them this, out the window. Roll them out the window mm -hmm. onto wow. this platform. But I was scared that they were going to roll off or something like that. We tied them down with, you know, with straps and so forth. But, you know, I guess being very careful, I rode down with the, you know, got the underneath and tied them all on. So you on. rode on the forklift? No, I didn't down. ride. They wouldn't let me do that. But I got it underneath okay. and got it all tied up. And, wow. Uh, and so then when it came down, we were able to catch it. Nothing happened. They mm -hmm. came down without Excellent. any problems at all. So, all right, so the, so you've moved them from the second story. You're now on the ground. Mm -hmm. So now what happens? I borrowed a large uh, trailer from uh, a friend of mine, hitched it up to my truck, and one at a time we rolled the carriages on there and tied them down and brought them up to the facility where we're storing them now. And it wasn't all that far, but it was far enough that we didn't want to have to, to push. Th These vehicles are, are very light. Uh, and they're made for single horses, so they, they really don't weigh a whole lot. But for us to pull them up that hill would have, because mm -hmm. there's a hill between uh, where we are in Water Street and, and Chestnut. Okay. Carriage Hill. Yes, that does exactly. make sense. Yeah. If I could just add, it was, Absolutely. Uh, it was Rick Bartley who was very generous um, to loan us his people to help us and also loan the forklift. And uh, Rick serves as the president of the Amesbury Carriage Alliance, which is the entity that owns the Biddle and Smart Building on Water Street. So it's that community effort again. So how many people them. were involved in this whole process? I mean, you know, you're, de you're, you're crawling underneath those carriages, tying them down mm -hmm. and, you know, forklifts and, you know, how there, many There people? were probably about a dozen, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. About a dozen people and everybody's very helpful, very supportive mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, everybody chipped in, everybody helped, and um, so it was really good. It was a, a f it was actually it was kind of a fun day. Mm -hmm. That's that that's simply amazing. So, um, so how many carriages do you think you'll put together in a collection? You know, what's the goal? All thirty nine carriages, or well, you'll probably leave the one in town hall. Mm -hmm. Maybe that seems to be a fixture. We haven't gotten that far along okay. in the process. Although we know that we're going to occupy the second floor of the building um, when we actually get it renovated. So they can't give you in. the first floor. You've got to move all the, the carriages the, the, onto the second. Exactly, because the first floor is going to be event <laughs> space, that, which is great because <laughs> yeah. that'll be the event space right. that we can actually earn money to be able to keep the museum and everything in operation. So I don't know how much much space we'll have when we're up there. I think there's like 2,000 square feet yeah. that we've uh, we have allocated on the second floor. So it depends upon what type of um, setup we want and mm -hmm. how uh, what type of displays we want. But we also know that we're going to we have to change out carriages so that won't just be those that are on display forever. We'll be, forever we'll right. be changing right. we things out. So. We haven't gotten that far to know how many carriages we'll actually keep. We're it's kind of a cool problem. It is. It is a you cool know, problem. As opposed you know, to not having enough, you could exactly. you could rotate exhibits around That's or right. whatever it is that you plan to do. It's and there are yeah. always people that have carriages in their barn and they don't know what to do with them. 
and uh, there's not much of a market for old carriages, mm -hmm. and so they're sometimes very willing to donate them to mm -hmm. us, which is great. And so we can we can pick and choose, which mm -hmm. is a great place to be in. Yeah. Now you had. Um, talked about Susan um, you know just how delicate some of the carriages are and stuff like that and that you're uh, in the middle of a cleaning mm -hmm. process with some carriages so how, you know I, I can't even imagine because they're antiques and probably old and maybe crumbly in places mm -hmm. or whatever how does that all work and you know well the the, the biggest enemy of a finish on a carriage is dust so the first thing we do is to very carefully dust them and to get as much off we can as we can that way. Then if there's any real gross stuff left on from spiders or birds or something like that, we use just plain water and a very soft cloth and uh, to get anything like that off. And then following that, depending what the carriage is made of, for example, one of the carriages, uh, one of the phaetons, has wooden wheels and wooden shafts, natural wood. Those we can use furniture polish on, and because that's going to be fine, but we wouldn't want to use that kind of a chemical on the finish itself. So that is just plain water. Then we found this, we have this one other drop mm -hmm. front fit that Mary was working on. Um, it isn't the original finish. Someone has used some not traditional paint on it, mm -hmm. uh, but we found with Mary cleaning it and then putting furniture, this um, old, English. Uh, old English, thank you, yeah. polish on it, it shines right up and it looks really nice. We're not too worried about ruining the finish because it's not wonderful to begin with. It's right. not authentic. We have one other vehicle, uh, the Runabout, which has a very nice finish on it. And that's going to be our project for mm -hmm. next Monday. And that we will use chamois cloth and just water to get that. Just mm -hmm. to get all the grime because yeah. it's just a hundred years worth of grime, mm -hmm. basically, or more. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sure in all the nooks and crannies. Now, do some of the carriages <laughs> have upholstery, like in the seats yes. and stuff yes. like that? I bet that, just over the over time, that is a problem. Or or deteriorates, mm -hmm. I would think. Mm -hmm. Mice. Uh, mice, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> moths. Yeah. Um, in fact, we found a dead rat body in <laughs> one of them in North to Andover. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, there's all kinds of yeah. things. Um, and I've, I've forgotten the, the man's name Tom. who brought the, Tom brought a, uh, a shop vac. And so he was cleaning all the upholstery and it really came out well. Uh, some of the tops, the, the vehicles have what are called falling tops, which means they collapse down. And some of those are really, the moths really got into them. Mm -hmm. But you have to store them with, the tops up, otherwise they crack and break and you can't get them up again. Mm -hmm. So do you ever in your restoration either do any repainting or do any fabric restoration or do you just restore what's there and that is what it is? What we're doing right now is really conservation which is just kind of stabilizing them as they are. We hope that someday in the future we can get sponsors that will uh, help us, uh, you know, conserve and, and restore some of the other vehicles. We don't need to get them into working condition so that, um, you know, they could actually be pulled by a horse, but we need them so that they're clean, they're not being eaten by bugs anymore, and, uh, you know, they're there t for people to enjoy and to appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, um, way at the beginning, we're talking, you know, you have to raise, you said like $6 million mm -hmm. for, for this whole thing. So, um, I'm sure that membership is one way that not only you get the word out, but that you also raise money. So, if mm -hmm. people were interested, what's that all about? Oh, it'd be great. I mean, our goal, we have a strategic plan that we, uh, in our final year of, that we're going to have to relook at, not to do another one for the Carriage Museum itself. And our goal was to reach 200 members, which is, I think, a very doable goal. We're currently at 152, and we have till June to get to that 200 mark. So I would just say welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh, membership is very affordable, uh, $15 for an individual, up to $25 for a family. And if you want to be a sponsor, 50 and $100 for a patron. So it's very affordable. And with the membership, um, it's really to support the museum. 
Um, we offer the pro different programming throughout the year. We'll have different yeah. speakers in. Uh, Edith Maxwell did, right, absolutely, did um, yeah. a talk, and we had um, at our annual meeting we had. Um, Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, it's going to kill me to think of his name. It will come to me. Um, we had an a, um, architectural survey of carriage barns mm -hmm. um, that w was very well attended. Our annual meeting had over 50 people. It was Excellent. the best we've ever had. And it's, I think we're generating a lot of different interests because I saw a lot of faces I had never seen before, which is always exciting that people are starting to hear about us and, and wanting to help. We have members in Colorado, Washington, D.C., a gentleman down in Brainger who owns a lot of carriages that we're dying to get uh, to go see in the election. Like to to he see has them. over 20 mm -hmm. carriages, and he's excited about us being a, an organization that so he can support. So this is more of a regional, I mean, it's really more of an international thing, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, you've got like this person in Braintree. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably other people that are in you know, the state that have carriages and, you know, would be really interested to right. see this whole thing go forward. Absolutely. Yeah, abs I mean, there's so many people that have collections of, you know, four and five vehicles. And some people, as I said, just have them in the barn. They don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. But they really are all over the place. Because this is New England. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And um, so, again, if somebody wants to be in touch with you, Mary, best way? Best way is to um, Amesbury Carriage Museum at gmail.com. I do check the email account every day, and I'll happily respond. They can join by going online to our website, Amesbury Carriage Museum uh, dot com, com. Yeah. and uh, they can do online uh, re membership right there, and uh, f uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, I want to say that Megan Peterson, who um, mm -hmm. is our vice president, she's an, the, one of the archivists at the library, and she also works for the Courier Museum at Manchester. So, and she has done all the web and the Facebook. She's our electronic um, knowledge she's person. The guru. She's the guru of all that, and puts out great articles. And well, your website is beautiful. Right, she's yeah, done a great really job. Good job. And we yeah. try to bring in all different history, not just always about the carriages. To well, you're also a partner with the Amesbury Treasure, Treasures organization we are. as well. So mm -hmm. it, it just seems like so much of this is is just all connected, right. and you know, just you know, Amesbury has so many wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. things to offer and the carriages are I mean it's just such a big part of the history sure is. here. And, and one final thing we um, we were able to um, acquire the assets of the Salzburg Point Railroad Hist Historical Association and now uh, we own that train station that's down at Heritage Park as well as all their uh, archival materials so we're really excited about that partnership and that that they turned to us to see if we would be able to carry on their mission and it, sure, we'll take it all. So it's this is going to be wonderful thing. down there when, yes. this is, when this is all completed. Mm -hmm. I think because of Mary's energy that people are turning to our organization because they can see the motion, the movement, mm -hmm. the, the progress that we are making. And uh, I think that's, I guess, Mary, yeah. I, I credit you Thank for you. getting this <laughs> off of dead center. <laughs> I Thank think you. it's really, really good. It's not easy, not an easy thing mm -hmm. to do. It's never easy to be involved mm -hmm. with a nonprofit. We are out of time. Wow, My that goodness, went that went <laughs> Mary Chatney, president of the Amesbury Carriage Museum, and Susan Casso, board of directors and all that other wonderful that stuff, other. and carriage driver. <laughs> um, thank you for being on the show. And if you want to contact the show, you can do so with our email address, which is around Amesbury at amesburyctv.org. I'm Meryl Goldsmith, and I will see you around Amesbury.